VPN tier list video, but not just any VPN tier list video. No, this is an update to my previous VPN tier list video. But before we jump into that, I want to tell you exactly why and how I got to the conclusion of the A, B, C, D, E, F tier list you're going to see. Because if you just look at a bunch of VPNs on a tier list, but don't understand fully why I picked these letters for these specific VPNs, the video is not going to have a whole lot of value. So I want to give you a quick synopsis, then we're going to dive right into it. I've tested every single VPN on this list. In fact, if I haven't tested it, it won't make the list because that doesn't make any sense. You have to actually have first hand knowledge and experience is why there was such a long gap between my previous tier list video and this tier list video because I had to test all of these VPNs. Now, this VPN video is brought to you by absolutely nobody because it's insane how many videos that are supposed to rate things are actually brought by a specific company. And I know the content creators always say, well, I mean, I'm not object. You're 100% objective when somebody's sliding $100 bills into your pocket. So I have not received a single penny from any of these VPNs. In fact, I get offered literally tens of thousands of dollars because the style of my channel, it's all privacy and digital security. I'm the perfect fit for a VPN provider. I've had several VPN providers want to be my flagship sponsor and offer me literally six figures a year but they're garbage most of the time. And so I can't do it and I'll never do it because it wouldn't make any sense and it would make me biased. So this video is 100% non-biased, it's my opinion, but it's non-biased from a company perspective. The other thing you need to know is I've tested all these and I'm gonna give you a quick brief reason why I put them where I put them because it's probably not what you think, but there always is a reason why. So let's get right into Operation VPN. All right, so we're going to jump right into the VPNs. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking me about the ghost program because I made that video series, the in-depth video series, how to not opt in to social credit score, to what's going on with CBDCs, how to be outside the CBDCs, how to be able to trade in crypto, how to be able to do all these things. And it's an exclusive video series that is only for ghost program members. Now, right here, you can see the ghost program. You can sign up for a limited time. The sale's still going on, and you get those that whole video series. After this ends... The video series will never be available, and it will never be available for sale on its own. It is only an added value for Ghost Program members. So if you're in the Ghost Program, of course, you'll be getting your logins and passwords. If you're not, you have, uh, I think we have 16 or 17 spots available, and that's it forever. So check out the first link down below if you want to join the Ghost Program and be able to live private and free. But that all starts with a VPN. This is a good place to start, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, the first one I want to talk about is Mysterium. Decentralized VPNs. Open source, which is very, very important. And this is a privacy base. But I'm going to do a quick note on the D VPNs. You got D apps, you got Web3, you got all these things moving forward. And I can appreciate that. Some of them are great, some of them are terrible, just like all other aspects of the internet Web1, Web2, and now we're getting ready to go into Web3. The thing is, I'm not really sold too much on a lot of the DVPNs. And the reason is fundamentally, they're just not proven yet. They're just not proven yet. The crypto space has been in a hiatus for years now. It's not really, it's kind of a lateral movement. And so we need more proof there. So Mysterium looks good. It looked good, but they haven't really proven themselves to be great. They haven't done anything wrong and I use them and play around with them. But do I think it has a future? Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb here and I'm going to put them in the A tier because I believe that they're a privacy-focused tool that has a future. Deeper Network is one I get asked about, let me see, every single day several times. I've used Deeper Network for a while. Deeper Network's VPN hardware is something I'm a fan of. I'm also going to give them an A. And just while we're at it, just so you know, Orchid, which is another one I'm a huge fan of. I made a dedicated video right here on Orchid. I'm going to give them an A. I'm going to give all three, Mysterium, Deeper Networks, VPN Hardware, and Orchid. I'm going to give all three of them an A. Now, I know that's a step down. My previous VPN tier list, I believe Orchid was an S tier. But the problem is decentralized VPNs, I think they've kind of been paralyzed with the fear of what's going on with the crypto industry and the regulations. That's why I talk about my video series, how to opt out of 
you know, the CBDCs and all this garbage because a lot of industries are paralyzed. And crypto is probably the number one industry that's paralyzed. So you haven't seen a lot of movement. You haven't seen a lot of movement in any of these com communities. Bitcoin, I mean, you've seen a little up, a little down, a little up, but it's nothing like substantial. Monero, one of my favorite communities. It's not really substantial. Ethereum, which is the building block to tons and tons of crypto coins. You know, not really substantial. All of these ones, people are always screaming, you know, whether it's Hex or whether it's ADA or whether it's uh, XRP, you know, all these things, but we just haven't really seen it bust out. And so I'm going to give all three of these an A tier because I believe in all three of them and I would recommend all three of them, but I just don't feel like they deserve S tier yet. NordVPN, oh my gosh, 100% of you have heard of NordVPN. Every influencer who wants to make a buck, and let me tell you from experience, NordVPN pays well. Now, I've never accepted a check from them, but even what they offer me, and I'm not that big of a channel, but in all fairness, I have the perfect audience. Like, there's no better audience. You could give it to some girl making sparkly cupcakes, you know, and nobody cares, and she's got 10 million views. But my audience, pretty much everyone who's watching this video, let alone everyone in my audience, has a VPN. That's why VPN companies specifically offer me so much money. NordVPN is not my favorite. I'm going to keep it nice here. A lot of people rave about VPNs. A couple other people in the privacy space, in my opinion, and I won't name names, have sold out to NordVPN because the checks have just gotten too big. I'm going to give NordVPN a D. Now, they should be an F for a lot of reasons. And let me explain something. A great VPN, and really listen to what I'm saying. If you get one thing out of this video, I hope you understand what I'm saying right here. This is probably the most important part of this whole video. More important than the tier list, more important than everything. A great VPN can do everything wrong. Everything. And I mean literally a great VPN could literally give logs to government agencies and still be a great VPN. And let me explain why. A great VPN is Mulvad. Movad is an S tier. It's our first S tier. Movad's one of my favorite VPNs. Movad is a great VPN. Why are they a great VPN? And why could Movad literally give logs to intelligence agencies and it still not matter? Why? Because they're a great VPN and because they don't have any information. I can buy Movad right now with the Monero completely anonymous. 100% anonymous, 100% off grid. Now, you guys already know that I recommend running, if you've watched my videos, I recommend running a VPN on your router and then I recommend running a VPN on your machines, right? So you have that compartmentalization that I always talk about. Even if, now I'm, I'm not saying, Movad has never done anything wrong in my opinion and from everything I've seen, all the audit, every, but let's just say Movad did everything wrong. There's still nothing to go off. It's still a bunch of random scrambled data that means nothing, encrypted data with people who bought Monero that's untraceable, okay? Now, I'm not saying Movad's done anything wrong. In fact, to my knowledge, they've done nothing wrong. But even if a great VPN like Movad did everything wrong, everything, everything, still a great VPN because there's nothing to give. Now, let's go full circle on our boys at Nord. <laughs> Nord can do everything right. Nord can do everything right and still be a horrible VPN. Why? Because they log everything. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they have a place on there for your firstborn, your secondborn, your thirdborn, your fifthborn. Here's the thing, guys. They can get hacked. There's been proven with logging and turn logs over. And let me give you a quick piece of knowledge when it comes to this whole logging thing. In 2018, there was what was called Connection Log Information Act. Now, it wasn't an act by government agencies. There was a bunch of organizations in the privacy sphere they wanted to get VPNs that no longer log. So they got, they got a whole bunch of VPNs that would no longer log your connection info. Basically, it was something to be sold to stupid people because your connection info doesn't actually matter. It's the metadata and just the packet transmission that goes through when you're surfing the web. And if you're surfing the web like 97% of people do, all of that data is logged. So they may not have your connection point but that's irrelevant, okay? And that was the fundamental issue, and Nord falls in that. So why does Nord get a D? Because technically Nord takes crypto, but there's a lot of things they do wrong, almost everything. In my opinion, this is just my opinion, I wouldn't take one penny from Nord because in my opinion, Nord should not exist because they're a terrible VPN. I've used them, and they're no, they have no value whatsoever in my opinion. But they do take crypto, and for some people, that's important. And if you're, like, in a place where you need to be able to get access, it's the only reason they get a D, because there are some people, like, 
I just need access. Not everyone's in America like me where you can just basically get anything. I, you can get, I mean, I know you guys watch the news. You're like, oh my gosh, America. You can get anything in America, anywhere, anytime. It's a different world to most people when they come here because they're not used to the lack of restrictions and the, the, the layers. Anyway, it's a whole different thing. And so NordVPN, for some people, they just need access. And so Nord can do that because they can take crypto. And if you do crypto anonymously, like I talk about through institutional accounts and my ghost program, you're set. And technically, you could use Nord and be just fine. I just don't recommend them because Molvad and other VPNs like that exist. So why would you use? Doesn't make any sense. So private VPN. Now, the thing with private VPN is you actually can set them up 100% anonymous through what I call a burner card or a prepaid card through your ghost business. That being the case, because some VPNs, in fact, a lot of them, like even Nord, have blocks on prepaid cards and even some will have blocks on corporate cards and make you get a separate account and there's even some vpns that do kyc now most of them didn't make this list because that's insane why would you have a vpn i mean it's just it's preposterous why would you <laughs> just i don't recommend doing kyc for crypto obviously in the ghost program we talk about how to do no kyc crypto through the agencies obviously it's kyc through your business not through you personally that's the difference this situation if you're kyc in a vpn I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand what's happening. So private VPN is, is a D just because, again, you can structure it through a burner card, but it's not the greatest VPN. If you're running through an alternate router, like in one of my previous videos where I talked about my burner router, then I'm swapping SIMs. That'll work. But this is a lot of tech stuff that's not necessary when if you just get Molvad and you're set. I, I don't get it. IP Vanish, I'm going to give them a D because they're cheap. And they don't technically log the metadata in the same way that some of these other ones do. So there is some value there if you're on an extreme budget. You don't have crypto yet. Because some of these DVPNs that I talked about, the first three A's, you'd probably be better off. But it's an option. And some people just aren't in crypto at all. And I get it. And some people are looking for a cheap option. And... Provided they don't log metadata in the way that a lot of these other VPNs do, you'd actually be ahead through your browsing experience. And then you can utilize a virtual machine to be able to use Linux to be able to separate yourself. I mean, cubes would be ideal. ideal. But if you don't have crypto, I doubt you have cubes. I mean, it's, so you're, you're, you're technologically kind of, maybe you're not technologically advanced than IVP or IPV, I, oh, bleh. Bloomberg Pow! IP Vanish would be, would be an option. Private internet access breaks my heart. This is one, if you would have asked me in like 2019, this was one of my favorite VPNs, private internet access, PIA. I was a very big fan and supporter of private internet access. It was one of my early favorite VPNs. And they sold, and then they sold again, and it's just not. The same. I'm going to give them a C, and the only reason they're getting a C, because who they're owned by, I don't like. But the compartmentalization and the audits that came through from a third-party auditor, but there's a lot of things about private internet access I don't like. The one thing that I do like is the way that they structure their features for you to have maximum feature control, especially if you're running a business and multiple machines. There are scenarios where I can see people using private internet access. And like I said, I've used them for a long time, but it's just simply not the same. And it's, I do have to admit, I no longer use them just because they've really kind of slid off that mountain, which really sucks because they were one of my favorites at one time. Tunnel Bear has been getting a ton of attention for some reason. I, I have no idea. Tunnel Bear, I'm going to give a D. And here's the thing with Tunnel Bear. A lot of people are like, well, Tunnel Bear has actually encrypted and, and they've done a lot of things to supposedly revolutionized the way that you're encrypted. Here's the problem with Tunnel Bear, and they've admitted this. They cannot protect your files, and they're actually obligated to log files. And I've talked to two different people in the Tunnel Bear organization about this issue that I call an issue, and they call standard operating procedure, which made me dig deeper when I was looking into some of these other VPNs, because Tunnel Bear, in theory, their marketing material looks great. All VPN marketing material looks great. I can assure you most of it's garbage. But when you look at 
your virtual private network that's supposed to be encrypted through this tunnel. Great name, Tunnel Bear. That's a great name. Problem is, when it comes to files and when it comes to sending local packets, then they're logged. And that's the fundamental problem. And also, they've been proven to turn over data. That's no good. Surfshark, in my opinion, is an absolute clone, has the exact same file issue, and I'm going to give Surfshark a D. Now, why would I give both these a D and not an F? Because technically, if you don't do anything on your local machine with your files and you're just strictly surfing the web, you could get away with using either one of these. You could get away with Tunnel Bear and you can get away with Surfshark. In fact, if I was leading a dummy trail for somebody to follow, I would probably use Surfshark or Tunnel Bear. If I was leaving a trail of misinformation, because... 90% of hackers, 90% of people who were trying to get to you couldn't penetrate Tunnel Bear or Surfshark, in my opinion. But there is some gaping holes and some gaping leaks. And if somebody good was trying to track me, I would know they would get through those gaping holes and those gaping leaks. And then I would lead a trail of misinformation, making them think that I'm using a VPN and I think that I'm secure, knowing that I'm not fully secure. And I would lead them down the yellow brick road <laughs> right into whatever trap I was setting up for them. So this is how I would do things because, you know, you got to set things up three moves ahead every single time. And this is how I would use these. Other than a trail of misinformation, I don't really see a value in Tunnel Bear or Surfshark. And so they're both on there as a D and I wouldn't use them unless you were in a bind or you were trying to do a kind of a counter misinformation situation. In that case, they were great and I highly recommend them. ExpressVPN is probably one of the most overhyped pieces of hunks of junk I've ever seen. I don't like them at all. I don't like anything about this company. I don't like anything about their VPN. I don't like anything about their product. It's an F. It's an absolute F. I've tried them on three different occasions. One occasion was through the company themselves. The other two occasions, I anonymous. And keep in mind, I anonymously buy this stuff to make sure that I don't get any special treatment or that. Because I've had a few companies that I've made videos on all of a sudden change their tune and reach out to me because I made a video on them. One of them got like 150,000 views and the, the vice president threatened. The, the, the thing is, I don't care. I, I, I can't be bought on this stuff. It's not worth it. And I think the reason is, again, I don't have a massive audience, but I have the absolute perfect audience for this. And I test these things out thoroughly when I look at them. And ExpressVPN is hard to test because it's just basically useless. I don't like the product at all. And I, and I will say, this is my opinion. If you like them, good for you. But I don't like them at all. My tests have gone horribly bad. I don't feel like it's secure. I haven't seen anything to make me feel like it's secure. I don't like the information they collect. I don't like their logging policy. I don't like their terms of service. I don't like anything about them at all as far as their product. I'm sure the people could be find people working a job. I'm talking about the product, obviously. I'm not talking about, I don't, you know, not, it's product, not people. Cyber Ghost. I mean, I don't even understand how this still exists. F, obviously. I don't even understand how this company, who's buying it? The Cyber Ghost just a pretend company? Like, are, are people actually going to Cyber Ghost and being like, sign me up? Really? Who? Where? When? How? I don't understand. If you've ever bought any of these ones in the F tier, what made them trick you into buying this? Like, I don't get it. I like the word ghost. Obviously, I have a full ghost program. The difference is my stuff actually works, unlike this VPN. CyberGhost is an F without question. Atlas VPN is an F. And here's why. Atlas VPN is one that a lot of you guys have brought up. A lot of you guys are like, Cody, Atlas is incredible. You should check this out. It looks amazing. You know what Atlas is? Have you looked into it? Atlas is part of Nord Network. Nord is better than Atlas because it accepts crypto in the way that it should. Atlas is an arm of Nord, and not even a secretive arm, not even bought by a similar parent company, but no, it's an arm of Nord. Atlas is worthless. It's basically like the, the B-list spare parts of Nord, in, in my opinion, and it's an absolute F. Uh, at least Nord, I gave a D. IVPN's an A. It was an A in my last one. It's an A here. There's a few things I would like to see increase see a good vpn is going to have i mean in theory in the future it'll be decentralized open source and it'll be a situation where you have maximum control on everything and your data is un 
your data is unsearchable, unreachable, unloggable, and obviously incredibly encrypted. Now, the encryption poses a problem, big picture, with quantum computing, 5G, AI, social credit scores, and the new CBDC. This is why I have literally structured my entire ghost program on how to circumvent the lifeblood of what's happening in Agenda 2030, okay? 5G pumps the lifeblood in. 5G is the network all this is built on. Web3, with the social credit score, the, the new social credit score, and when you look at the CBDC, which is obviously control of all currency, when you look at the quantum computing, which is going to allow these organizations to compress, compartmentalize, explore, and take actionable steps on amounts of data that was previously incomprehensible, and then the AI, which is going to be running this system. This is all just out there in the open. This isn't like some, oh, maybe 1984, back in 1984, they talked about that, but it's actually coming here now for real. So how do you circumvent this? Well, a VPN, in my opinion, is a good starter step. I mean, a VPN is like 1% of anything, but it's a good starter step, right? Well, if you're going to have a good VPN, what would kind of, what would kind of give you the assumption that a company that wants your name, your email, your phone number, your address, it only takes credit cards, only linked to your name, not even businesses, what would give you the assumption that that's a good VPN? You're paying for somebody to keep all your data. It's kind of like in a situation where we have six, 7% interest rates and banks are still paying almost nothing. And then in some cases you have bank fees, even though the banks are cleaning up because these high interest rates. Make no money. Everyone's talking about high interest rates. It sucks to buy a car, it sucks to buy a house, but it's great if you have money. So why are these big banks not flipping the script? Same reason the VPNs aren't. The data, the product, the control of the data is the product that's, that prints out the money. Okay? And if you're willing to use these cyber ghosts of the world, if you're willing to use these Atlas VPNs of the world, then why would they, why would they not switch it around? So that's the fundamental problem there. The next thing is peer VPN. Peer VPN is one of the original ones that started that 2018 anti-log movement. And again, garbage. Peer VPN is an F. It was an F last time, and they've done nothing to change that. Proton VPN. Oh, it wouldn't be a list if I didn't list old Proton VPN. <laughs> Proton VPN is a C. Now, let me say, you should never, ever, 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 under any circumstances, use the same company for multiple things. Now, what do I mean by that? If you have Proton Mail, don't use Proton VPN. That is not a diss on either product. It's a fact that you should never have more than one thing, ever, with one company. You should compartmentalize everything. Don't have your phone bill and your power bill and your cable. I don't know why anybody would have cable, but people do your TV bill. Don't have, all, don't have more than one thing with anybody. Don't have your home loan and your car loan with the same bank. Don't have more than one thing with anybody ever in life. That's very good life advice. Compartmentalize everything. Everything. All of it. Also, when it comes to Proton. So that's not a, a, a dish that Proton. That's every company. I don't care how good you think the company is. Have their best product and then get something else somewhere else. My problem with Proton Mail runs deep. I talked about that in my last one. I'm not going to rehash. You can watch my last VPN video where I talked about my issues with Proton Mail. I've gone rounds with people at Proton Mail's company. You know, here's what I'll say. The reason I say they're a C is because they are open source. The VPN auditing companies are about as good as the companies that give the United States of America a country with more debt than their GDP and they are simultaneously the biggest country in the world, the most powerful military in the world, the most money, we're literally the world's reserve currency and somehow we've managed to rack up more debt than anywhere else on earth, including our own GDP, and then we have these rating agencies that rate us triple A. What, what, first of all, what's with all the triple A, double A, A plus, it's just A. Even this tier list is stupid because of S tier. What is S? Super, super, super awesome. 
But, you know, I went along with the trend because, hey, why not? So S tier, right? Mulvad is in the S tier. These useless agencies that rate the United States AAA plus, super fine, awesome. We're getting ready for the biggest recession in the history of the world. But yeah, they're super AAA, right? Those same agencies are about as good quality as the people who audit these VPNs. So I just want you to fully understand when you see these VPNs have been audited, the kind of companies you're dealing with. Look deeper into their credentials. Look deeper into what they actually do. There's companies right now that are rating Europe and the Euro. That's an A. Huh. Australia. Ca Canada is basically on their way to a third world country right now. And they're like, oh, yeah, Canada, superpower. <laughs> so, listen, and, and again, Canadians are great. Your leader's the dumbest person on earth. And, I, you know, America, we're asleep at the wheel with Joe Biden. He's literally asleep right now. He's literally sleeping. Always, pretty much. But we have some fundamental things in place. I'm not saying America's so great. America's an absolute disaster. And these people in place are similar people who are rating these things to get you to buy them. So understand that. Don't take anybody's word for it. Look into it. I just made this list. Great. It's a great starting point. Do further research. Further research. I've spent a year looking into these companies, using these companies. A year. But you should still research them. Don't take my word blindly. Research them. I put my money up. In fact, I turned down obscene amounts of money from VPN companies to do this video non-biased. Could have just took the money and bought a Ferrari. But instead, I did the video non-biased. And to tell you what I think about VPNs, you can let me know down below. I'd love to hear some other ones you'd like to see on future lists. Keep in mind, I looked at 47 VPNs. Over 30 of them got cut right off the bat. Got cut. Because they're so bad, they don't... I mean, even a lot of the F-tiers, I told you why they're F-tiers. The only reason Atlas is on this list is because it's one of my most... Everyone thinks Atlas is so great. Oh my gosh, Atlas is such a great VPN. You see them come out a couple years ago. You didn't check out Atlas. It's a snake oil arm from NordVPN, in my opinion. I'm just going to say it's in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is what I think, guys. So anyway, that's what I think about these VPNs. I cut over 30 of them off my list because they're so bad. This industry is running rampant. Now, you might think, well, Cody, the only S tier you have is Molvat. Here's my question to you guys. What Using Molvat is the benchmark. And, I, I, and I'm not part of Molvat. People, people speculate, oh, he's part of Molvat. I'm not part. I don't know anybody at Molvat. I'm not part of Molvat. I've never talked to anybody. It's actually one of the few VPNs I've never talked to. It's just a great product. Using Molvad as the benchmark, show me a VPN that's better than Molvad. I would, I would switch tomorrow. Again, I have no allegiances. I'm not saying they're the best in the world. I'm not saying they're perfect. But I would love to see one better. I use them as the benchmark for this situation. So tell me one better. Anyway, guys. Really appreciate you guys checking out this video. Let me know what good VPNs you would like to see on the future list, and I'll respond to some of the comments. I probably cut it if you're asking about it, or maybe I didn't. Maybe I don't know about it. I, I'm not pretending I know about all of them. Like I said, I checked out 47. I kind of avoided a bunch, so I've probably seen 60, 65, but there's hundreds. There's literally hundreds at this point, so maybe there's some really good ones I missed, and I would love to check them out. If you haven't already, make sure you check out the first link down below, the ghost program, why you still can. There's a few slots available so you can get the video course. There's nothing like it on the internet where I break every single thing down because that kind of content is banned across the entire internet because they want you in their system. And it works in all countries, Australia, Asia, Africa, South America, United States, Canada, everywhere. It works across the entire world. So anyway, guys, really appreciate it. Also, I did a lot of exclusive content in my video series that is specifically for other countries, which is pretty cool. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Put out your comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.